Outlander comes to its dramatic season 4 conclusion on Sunday night, and it leaves with a cliffhanger that has to be seen because it is not something that happened in Diana Gabaldon's Drums of Autumn novel, on which this season was based. But before the surprise ending, the majority of the episode deals with Jamie, Sam Hewen, Claire, Katrina Balfe, and young Ian's, John Bell, attempt to rescue Roger, Richard Rankin, from his Mohawk captors. But just when it seems that success is in their grasp, a simple action on the part of Claire causes the Mohawk to refuse the request to trade for their captor and sends the weary travelers into a downward spiral as they try to figure out a way to change the tribe elders' minds. Parade.com had a chance to speak with Bell about the journey that young Ian has taken from his days at Lollybrook, to his bootlegging days in Edinburgh with his uncle Jamie, to being Shanghai to the Caribbean and to the clutches of Galis, Lot of Urbake, to his interest in Native American culture and his attempt to learn their language, to working with Hewan and Balf and, of course, Rolo. What was the first thing you did when you heard about the role? Did you pick up the books to see who young Ian was? I didn't go straight to the book. I'll be honest, I went straight to the wiki page, because I wanted to find out as much as I possibly could as quickly as possible. I read everything that I could on that, and that's when I got the books. I got my mum to start reading the books, and I got my gran to start reading the books. We'd all get together in a little book club and discuss. With every new strand of information that I got, I fell more and more in love with him. What an amazing character to have the opportunity to play. As you are a book fan, you know the transformation that he goes through slowly but certainly builds over time into the crescendo of this finale. It was such a gift for an actor. Young Ian is forever a part of me. I hold him dear to my heart. Young Ian has had quite the journey, working with his uncle as a bootlegger, being kidnapped by pirates, and Shanghai to the Caribbean and sold to Galas. As an actor when you delve into your characters so deeply, they stay with you. Young Ian doesn't feel to me too far from who I am, which is what's so lovely about playing him. I can really relax into him, who he is and what his values are. So as a journey, it's been a gift to be able to have that moment right at the end where all of these past traumas, all of the conversations he'd had with Jamie, all of the decisions he has made, lead him to this destiny, this fate. It really was just remarkable. I'm so happy with how they've decided to write that final moment between Jamie and Ian. You mentioned that Ian doesn't feel too far from who you are. What is it you relate to? I think it's to do with his attitude on life and that he'll often be the butt of the joke, but never lets it get him down, you know? He's a survivor. He's a fighter. He's an incredibly emotionally intelligent character. That's what I love about him. He doesn't feel like typical 18th century man. He's much more understanding. That, of course, is instilled in him by his relationship with Jamie. He does feel a little bit like a mini, a younger Jamie. So, that's why it's so lovely to be able to really work with Sam and find those moments of their similarities. So, Ian is the Caucasian character that takes most to the Native American culture. He learns to speak the language, he goes hunting with some of the young men. How hard is speaking a foreign language for you? Like any foreign language, you need to be learning it for years to be able to speak it with confidence. So, that was a part of Ian. I didn't want him to suddenly come across as the greatest linguist of the 18th century, you know? But his passion for the Native American culture is so strong that he takes that challenge on himself and learns it. So, that's exactly what I had to do, you know? Immediately. I was in touch with the Mohawk Language Preservation Society, which is the biggest course you can do. They have an online course to learn the language. They're using it to fight against the language's extinction, so to be able to have that wealth of resources available to me was great. As well as that, there were elders that came from America, from the New York area, and Canada, to work with me on some of the more specific words and specific intonations that were required. I just had a great time. I love languages. I'm very passionate about it. The best way to understand someone's culture is to be able to speak their language, so I think it was important to Ian. It was important to me. I'm super pleased with how it came across. I think he does justice to their beautiful language.
This is a specific time in the history of America. With everything that you went through to film this, did you learn something that surprised you or that you really related to? During my research there was a beauty in the way that Diana, in the books, often compares the Native American warrior to the Scottish Highlander of clan times. I found that comparison really intriguing and it sparked in my mind why Ian falls so quickly in love with everything that Native American culture has to offer. I think that was the biggest thing I took away from the books. With regard to learning something new about American history, as a Brit, you look at what happened and realize that there was a lot of ST that went down, and getting to actually come face to face with that was tough at times. I think back to the first part of the season when we were at Joe Casta's, Maria Doyle Kennedy, and having to deal with slavery and all the consequences that had. I think that was a defining moment for Ian and he saw what was right and wrong. He's a modern man for being born in the 1700s. I think his line, well, the Indians were here first, were they no? Shows you his attitude and how he sees things, and a lot of what he thinks is probably affected by Claire and her modern views on the world. So, I think for being born in the 18th century, he was probably one of the most understanding men of that time. Ian is the one character who isn't in on the secret of how modern Claire really is. Apparently so. We joke he must not be an active listener, right? And connected the dots? He definitely knows something's up. Sam and Katrina are such a strong presence on the show as Jamie and Claire. You mentioned a little bit about you and Sam trying to find moments, but what is it like watching them work and being a part of that? I've been incredibly fortunate in that all of my scenes have been either with Claire and Jamie, or with Lotta who, as well, is a magnetic actress. So, to have that time together, it's been remarkable. It's nice to see, as well, that although their connection is so instinctual, that they are able to relax and joke around and have a laugh on set, as much as they are about getting the work done. So, something that was instilled to me through them is that we're all here together. We're all working toward a common goal. So, let's do it with smiles and when the work comes, do the work. I love them. I think Katrina and Sam are the best co-stars I could ask for. Anything I need, any help, any issues. I go to Katrina and Sam and I say, how would I deal with this? How would I word this? From the moment I started the show, you know? So, that's how I see them. So. I talked to Sam and Katrina at the beginning of this season and they weren't thrilled about working with Rolo, who's one of my favorite characters. He's so gorgeous. They said he was young and so not trained enough. You did that video with him. Is your experience a little bit different? I love Rolo. My experience is probably a little different, because I got to bond with Rolo a lot before we started filming. So, when I got into that, he was already listening to me. There's that saying, don't work with kids and animals. But actually I found Rolo to be the most professional on set. And that's shade. I love some of the fans' comments. He's the cleanest frontier dog in the world, 